This is Mark. Mark. Hello. Hi, Mark. Kate, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm excellent. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun because I'm very mixed on this topic. I looked into it. <laughs> if I'm you... still mixed. So I... I'm actually, this is why I wanted to have you on. Cool. Well, and I mean, if, if you yeah. weren't mixed, I would be surprised. Right. I, I'm actually super excited. Um, I love conversations and um, G, Ed G. Edward Griffin just came on and um, I just, I don't know, I just love a good conversation. So okay. this will be a lot of fun and um, I'll just, I'm just going to just ask questions really openly, I guess. You know, sure. Like, no, uh, nothing's you know. off. Nothing's off limits. So whatever you want to okay. do. Yeah. Okay, and why don't we start out talking about the road um, that you uh, that you went down on this? Because sure. I'm sure that a lot of people will, you know. Yeah. Anyway, um, maybe maybe kind of understand where you're coming from too a sure. little bit more too. For sure. Does that sound good? Yeah, okay. it does. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna play my 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 mission. Um, I have like. 5,000 intros to the show, but this one is actually a showcase of what the show does. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this one today. Okay. And then, um, and then I think I have a short bio of you. Let me see here. Let me make sure I have it up. Sorry. This That's is right. such a weird show. It's like, uh, a strange, um, um, every, every day kind of rolling by the seat of our pants. So uh -huh. hold on just a second. Okay. Uh, I'm just getting some liners ready. And where are you? Where Where are you right now? Like uh, what, what up, state? Up Up north of Seattle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, I can't wait to hear kind of your backstory. So this will be great. Okay. Um, one. Sorry, we're on the news right now. Mm -hmm. The propaganda news, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we call. It. Yeah. Um, let's hear from. Uh, um. Okay. Well, and I, I just wanted to uh, to thank Mike, too, for getting you on. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's see. Very nice. Yeah, nice Let's, guy. Yeah. Let's see here. Hold on. Okay. The Sky's the Limit, right? That's the book I'll refer to. Uh, Sure. Sky's the Limit is the first one, and uh, Flat Earth Clues, End of the World is the last one. What, what was the name of it? Flat Earth Clues? Yeah, that's okay. the name of the series. Uh, Flat Earth Clues, okay. Sky's the Limit. Sky's the Limit. Okay. Okay, we're going to be coming on. Hold on just a moment. Okay. I'll bring you on. Now, you're on my same channel with music you probably won't be able to hear. So you'll just hear silence for about a minute and a half. Okay. So just hang with us. And then um, we can even hear you breathing. So I'm just letting you know right. that it's out of all eight channels. You happen to be on the same one. Hold on just a moment. All one right. Second rain this weekend so there may be some relief from the ongoing drought and st george police are looking for whoever is responsible for destroying 30 mesquite trees along the mayor's loop near confluence park from the st george news radio weather center sunny at 104 today clear in 73 tonight breezy sunny at 102 tomorrow for st george news radio i'm carl lamar remember if anyone asks we're a nice normal talk show the kate daly show starts now And let me just tell you, there's not too many subjects I haven't done on the show. 
after 10 years, can you imagine this, the amount of subjects? So I actually am bringing on a guest. Uh, this is going to be a really uh, neat hour, I think, just to listen. And if you disagree with the following premise of Flat Earth, I have two. To be honest with you, I'm very mixed on this subject. I've, I've kind of delved into it a little bit, but um, I'll t I actually, this is why I'm excited to have the conversation in the first place, is to hear uh, what Mark Sargent has to say about this. He's written the book on this, Flat uh, Earth, uh, Fat, Flat Earth Clues, uh, Sky's the Limit. And these are books that so many people are checking out. Let me just tell you, because... I'm always open to new ideas. I'm always open to things that have been we, we've been deceived by. And if this is one of them, I want to hear all the reasons why Mark thinks uh, and was drawn to the subject in the first place. Conversations never hurt anyone. And I think that this is a, a worthy of a conversation. You probably heard about this a little bit. And uh, if you haven't, you've probably been living in a cave because a lot of people are talking about this. So I welcome you, Mark Sargent. How are you? I am well. And thank you very well. much for having me. Thank you very much for having me. Excellent. Uh, flat clue, uh, flat earth clues. You know, I'm going to botch this a million times. Um, the sky's the limit. I do. I'm like the name murderer. It's like my pet name. <laughs> anyway, um, I just wanted to mention uh, Mark because, you know, Mark, um, I, I want you to tell us your story. I could go through a whole bio, but I don't know if that's, I actually just want people to hear why you were drawn to this concept of flat earth. What what drew you in? What got you thinking? If If this was a red pill for you, then what got you into that red pill? What was your what were you thinking at the time? Conspiracy boredom. Conspiracy boredom. That's that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Conspiracy was boredom. Thinking. I love it. <laughs> no, it's true. Okay. No, it's true. So. I was. That's great, I though. was into conspiracies, into conspiracies after, after nine. Or I'm sorry, after nine, JFK sorry, the after movie. JFK the movie. Okay. Okay. And, and fair but, enough. And yeah. by the way, we're getting a little bit of okay. echo. On, on yeah you know, we on. might I feel bad about that we might that's right I'm so I, sorry I will try to power through it so oh now it's gone that's weird okay excellent okay. There you go. so whatever happened so um I went into I mean I grew up in a very rural island north of Seattle called Whidbey w-h-i-d-b-e-y I've been there I know exactly where you are well, yes there you go and mm -hmm. I, very naive, didn't believe in any conspiracies at all. Why would anyone in authority lie to us about anything ever? You know, it was it was right. it was sure. the eighties. Sure, why not? And mm -hmm. then I went and saw JFK in the theater in I think ninety one or ninety two when that thing came out, and it sure. was the first time I'd even been exposed to the you know with the obvious exceptions like Bigfoot, the Loch Ness sure. monster, and UFOs. And it's like holy smokes, people in power do lie to you. And, and it's like, and, right. and but it was pre-internet, so there really wasn't much for me to expand on. And then when the internet started firing up in the mid '90s, and then 9/11 happened, and all that stuff, um, I really I dug down as many rabbit holes as I could. And I know you're probably not old enough to remember, you know, when you could finish the internet, when the internet was very sure. very limited. Sure. And yeah. then. To the point, and I never got married, never had kids, and so I had a lot of free time on my hands. A <laughs> uh, little tip to you guys out there. If you never get married and have kids, you, I... you better have hobbies because you, you You'll got... be writing a book soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you absolutely will. And mm -hmm. so um, summer of 2014, I was in uh, my condo in Boulder, Colorado. I was out there uh, doing software training. Uh, I'd done, well, long, I went out to Boulder, Colorado in 95 to play video games for a living and parlayed that into proprietary software training where I traveled around the country and, and did all this stuff. And so anyway, lots of free time all over the place and lots of rabbit holes to where the summer of 2014, I got bored, uh, conspiracy bored. It's like, oh, is there anything that not uh, what, right, that look, missing? Yeah. Look on your bucket list. Is there anything left for, for me to look at? And all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, there is this flat earth thing. And now I, I had previously, the re how I got there was I dug into hollow earth. I, it's like okay. I, I spent a little time. I didn't know much about that either. And as I was digging into Hollow Earth, it kind of branched off into a flat Earth thing. And it's like, mm -hmm. and I remember the very first video that I clicked on on YouTube. It was really this profound moment because I got flushed. I was embarrassed to click on it. And I'm an internet veteran. I have clicked on a lot of things with naked people. 
and th- and but and nothing should be able to embarrass me. And it's like, why is this thing embarrassing me? I'm alone in a room with the blinds pulled, right? There's no mm-hmm. way this thing should embarrass me. And it did. And it's like, why, why, why? And so I started digging into it and digging into it. And, and I, I hated Flat Earth, absolutely loathed it. And mm-hmm. nine months later, I gave up. I, I could not prove the globe in a court of law anymore. So mm-hmm. I decided to make a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues and put them out to the internet hive mind. Because the internet as a, as a hive mind is actually very intelligent. People, yeah. as, a, as a group, they don't miss anything. You, you see yeah, all sorts of... They all put in their two cents. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and a lot of people, all it takes is one nerd in the middle of Nebraska in his underwear at three in the morning. And it's like, oh yeah, by the way, did you notice this? And, right. and, and I put this out there and the feedback that was circling around to me was, yeah, you know what? It's not that crazy and here's why. And I had all these subject matter experts calling me up, pilots and engineers and all branches of the military. And people are calling me up going, yeah, it's not nuts. And, and they kept showing me different, different examples. And I kept putting out these things called the Flat Earth Clues. And, th- and I waited, I was waited for, I think, and that was in February of 2015. And I waited for maybe six months be- mm-hmm. before I could finally say, you know, I was 95% sure. And then after that, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm totally all in. And then the ball started rolling. And next thing what? you know, books and. Wow. Yeah. What tip, what tipped it for you into, well, like I, for you anyway, uh, I, you know, th- this is, I think this is true or I can't deny this. What was that tipping Point. Not the normal thing that people get into. Um, okay. Most people that get into Flat Earth, it, it, they get brought in for the simple things, uh, which is why we have become so prolific over the last six years, uh, is because long distance photography, for example, that's usually what drags people in. Okay. But th- th- that wasn't it for me. For me, it was Antarctica, believe it or not. It was the, Ant- the Antarctic Treaty which was mm. put in place in 1959 that says that no corporation from any country, no matter how much influence or liquid assets you have, can set up shop there ever. And it, it is interesting, and I'll tell you that. There's yeah, yeah. definitely and, something going on down there. Yeah, and it's not its not a secret. You can download the... I've got the PDF on my, my machine. You can get it from anywhere. The end was ratified in 1959, and mm. it was a real big red flag for me because uh, I'm, I'm a student of a lot of things, and philosophically it was just but just alarm bells were going off it's like wait a minute this world is based off of money greed and power that's the mm-hmm. rule right that's how things are and this place you the military went down there and the the head of the whole thing down there at the time Ab- admiral richard bird he went on television uh like the, yeah. six, the 60 minutes of his day and said oh yeah by I the think- way p- place is made out of money and and right. yet the next mission he goes down there <laughs> all of a sudden they put this document in place it's like yeah no one should ever go down there ever lock it down right, an entire continent cut off i yeah. mean my god yeah what in the world's done yeah. yeah it's the only piece of real estate that's not owned by anyone uh and again it's the the treaty isn't even up for review until 2041 um and so, and so anyway that's that was the big flag for me it's like okay how did that tie into flat earth for you it tied yeah. in because uh, because of Admiral Byrd, uh, if you read, if you look into the hollow earth theory, you, you read some like his secret journals of like a journey to the center of the earth thing when he flew in this rickety plane in 1926 to the North Pole. And you thought, oh, well, he would just keep going to the North Pole. No, that wasn't the case. Uh, they sent him, he was the youngest admiral in the history of the Navy. He made um, rear admiral at 41 and they mm-hmm. sent him to antarctica in 1928 and that he just flew around in planes for 30 years that's all he did i mean an admiral and his and his team they took a break for world war ii but mm-hmm. the um they were doing oh by the way world war ii a wonderful uh thing that connected to that so everyone left the ice in during world war ii obviously you know there's stuff going sure. on except for one group nazi germany again this is not right. this is not theory is like these were the only guys that were down there people think people thought that indiana jones was a movie it is not just a movie (laughs) nazi germany if if the ring of power if harry potter's wand was somewhere out there they were going to send people to find it if it could turn the the tide of the war and so they were down there and which was interesting that's how admiral Byrd really got connected to it after the war because after he was at the the um uh the japanese surrender signing 
And then right after that, he took a full-blown carrier group, 5,000 men, down to Antarctica during Operation High Jump. And mm -hmm. the speculation around that is just rampant. It's like, okay, was he trying to root out the last of the Nazi bases? We don't know, but whatever happened, it was resolved because by 1954, he was on television, you know, saying, oh yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, he was worried that there was gonna be a lot of conflict down in Antarctica because there were so many resources down there. An entire right. mountain range made out of coal and uranium. He's and like a mini United States. I mean, it was like United States. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah, he also said that there was this huge chunk of land beyond the, the geographic South Pole that was larger than the United States that no human being had ever seen. And it's like, what? What are you talking about? It's like you've been flying down there at that point for 20 years. How, how is right. this even possible? And then, of course, you have Forrester being pushed out of a window who uh, command, uh, Lieutenant Commander John uh, Forrester, right? Yep, yep, yep. yep. Which, it? yeah, which was part of uh, one of my favorite made for TV movies, uh, Roswell, uh, uh, with Kyle yeah. McLaughlin. Uh, yes. and, and Martin Sheen. Wonderful movie. If anyone hasn't checked that out, not many people have watched it, uh, you know, because it was a made for TV movie, but excellent movie. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back. Let's talk about some of the ins and outs about Flat Earth, um, why people are coming to this conclusion. Uh, there's some scriptures, there's some all kinds of things. We'll be right back with okay. Mark Sargent, the guy that wrote the book on it. We'll be right back. Kate Daly Show. All right. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. Cool. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so then as far as Antarctica goes, mm -hmm. um, then how does it prove flat? Earth? Well, I it's a connection question. The, the con I, mean? I mean, do you want me to answer that to you now or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. the, I think it's connected in that, well, one, the Antarctic is the only continent in the flat earth model. And this goes mm -hmm. with everybody in the flat earth model. It's the only continent that doesn't look somewhat like the maps. The, the, okay. the flat earth map, which is interesting on its own, is shaped like the UN flag. And I mean exactly like the UN flag. However, the UN flag has something missing on it, which is okay. the entire continent of Antarctica. And in the UN flag, that has been replaced with mm -hmm. uh, the, these big spiky Greco-Roman wreaths. But in the flat earth map, it's actually just Antarctica. But instead of being an island continent like Australia, it's just spun around the entire outside. So it's stretched. It's way, way bigger than it should be. Now, does that mean, by the way, that Antarctica is the end of the world? It's, it's this edge. Right. People say, why don't you fall off the edge? It's like, oh, God, not this whole cosmic waterfall thing. <laughs> this, this is not Asgard, right? right. You know, the, okay. Thor did us no favors at all. Uh, yeah. it is none of them. No, no, <laughs> no, it is the beginning of the end, meaning which is why Admiral Byrd was flying around for so long. Because <laughs> once you go from the coastline, what we think is that the Antarctic landmass is extends far, far further than than what they than what we even even on our map, it only extends like two or three thousand miles because we have to cut it off somewhere. But we okay. think it extends much, much further. So, yeah, so it's, you might want to explain that when we come back and we'll get to the we'll get to like the points that um, that people, because there are people out there that ha that have not heard of flat Earth that sure. might be listening. To this oh show. yeah, so I should, we'll we should probably through, describe it. Yeah. Yeah, the points, and yeah. Uh, and then um, if I'm looking through a telescope and I'm seeing something that's round, how could we be flat? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. So um, that'll be one of the questions, and then one of the other questions I have, just to kind of give you an idea, because it goes, the show goes so fast in, in time, know. and then we. Time. But the um, I know you probably done a gazillion interviews, but the um, if the Earth was created on the third day, what was it orbiting? Because the sun, the moon, the stars were created after that, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Not, and okay. By the way, not many people ask that one. It's good. So that came from Mike. <laughs> so <laughs> hat tip, Mike. Um, but uh, but I thought that that's a really good question, and uh, and and of course the question I had was if you're looking at a telescope and you're seeing something round, why would we not be round too? Sure, so, sure. Um, and then of course uh, um, this. Okay, yeah, the significance of Antarctica, um, and really how that ties in and and proves 
more of a flat earth than not. I've always been intrigued by Antarctica. That's probably when one of the subjects I've tried to go down um, probably the most in my spare time just because it never made sense to oh, me. Oh, it's, so. it's, it's completely unique. Most people don't even know, by the way, that uh, it's a high plateau, that most of Antarctica yeah. sits at like 14,000 feet. Which, You're right. which is ridiculously high. I mean, high altitude sickness kicks in around seven for some people, 7,000. Yeah, so why, and yeah. again, no indigenous plant life, animal life, uh, population. And then why, why are they trying to sell us on a round earth? What does that do? Oh, that's, I mean, that's, that's easy. Uh, that's, okay. that's just control more, more than anything because, okay. well, we can get to it. All right. But but, uh, but the short the short version the is object. you're hiding you're hiding a greater authority whether it be some sort of ancient civilization or some sort of deity you have to okay. you have to hide it so the and, the short version is you okay all we care and about then is, what about go ahead wait what what we care about is what oh all we care about is the wall I mean you take oh, an animal gotcha. per, animal preserve you put a thousand acre animal preserve you put a couple of buffalo in there and you know they could be sitting right next to the fence they don't care because it's oh it's a right. wonderful little place you put yeah. ha half a dozen people in there that's all they're going to look mm -hmm. at it's like why is the fence there who's on the other okay. side of the fence who built the fence it, it, did we anger the fence right. people maybe we should sacrifice right. people to the fence and it just never and ends not and not to mention NASA black budget because you can hide a lot of money in space. Exactly. Right? Oh yeah. Why would you let that go to waste? Yeah. Uh, and okay. that's just spiraled. Okay. So it's like okay. Hold the line. We're going to be coming back on 19 seconds. You won't be able to hear it, but I'm going to play Space Oddity. Okay. So uh, just a moment. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Schedule your free consultation today. Call Prolong Medical Center at 435-375-5000. That's 435-375-5000. Together, we'll make a difference in your life. Talk lines are open now. Call 888-673-1450. This is the Kate Daly Show. Hi there. Friday. Uh, I love Friday. Yeah. We're going to be asking and answering some very important questions so we can kind of get the feel for what this is and what it's about and why. Yeah. I think most importantly, always the why, um, especially on this show. Um, but we've done shows on the moon landing. We've done all kinds of different shows. And I think this um, was a, this is a topic we've never done on the show before, which is surprising that we ha there, there is a subject we've never done on the show. Mm. But I'll gladly have a conversation because I think that this is very worthy of a conversation. Um, and then also, I just wanted to mention, get over to MyPillow.com, order the products. Uh, we, you know, with Father's Day coming, this is such a great time to get some great products. And then you're also helping Truth and Radio, also helping the show and helping Mike Lindell um, to uh, put out the movies about the fraud mike lindell tv.com and you can go check out his latest movie on all there's some there's so many movies he could make on all the fraud that's happened so election fraud um but go to mypillow.com and put in the code kate my first name k-a-t-e and you'll get up to 40 percent off take advantage of this they're fantastic products i would never tell you to get them unless i had them myself and i loved them so mark Sargent, welcome back and so many questions so we're kind of going to go through sort of a rapid fire question okay. and answer okay. to get people caught up into so describe flat earth theory flat earth theory you are not living on a tiny little rock flying through space and you're covered with a tiny little bit of water and even a smaller amount of smoke and you're going in impossible directions at impossible speeds it could be wiped out by anything at any time you mm -hmm. are in a building for lack of a better okay. term uh with walls and a floor and a ceiling that maybe looks like a snow globe maybe looks like a cake box looks like a pizza box whatever resonates with you to be honest but mm -hmm. the point is is that it's so big and so complex that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out till almost 1960 and when they did they had a wonderful little x-men smoking man <laughs> meeting where they mm -hmm. said so what's the worst that could happen and they read a lot of a lot of stuff which we're, we'll talk about later hopefully and they said, well, we're just going to keep this secret. We did not build this place. All we are mm -hmm. doing is trying to keep it a secret. So that's what flatter theory is. We are in a 
the the ceiling, all the lights you see on the ceiling, I know we'll get to that question, are just pretty, pretty lights. Uh, the, the stars and the planets and everything else is just an elaborate, ornate clock system that predates language. That's all it is. It is no different than a planetarium. Uh, and, and sort of a Truman Show episode. There you go. And, and yet, are you in space? Why would you be in space? Who told you there was space? Why would there have to be space at all? you probably in a little box sitting on someone's desk. That's the, okay. that's the short version. Okay. And then, um, so if I'm looking through a telescope and I'm seeing round planets, why would I not be round too? Oh, and by the way, we never, everyone in our community doesn't even use the word round. We use the, oh. we use ball or sphere or globe okay. because those are three okay. dimensional. Technically a dinner plate is round. Your dining room table is round. Anyway. Okay. But yeah, so if you're in a planetarium, and I've done this with many people, it's like, okay, do you see Jupiter up there? Yes, I do. Okay, take a pair of binoculars. Can you see the moons of Jupiter? Yes. Does everything look spherical? Yes. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Because it's just an image on the ceiling. I say, hmm. right, when you walk out of that building, who's to say you're just not in a much, much bigger building? There you go. Interesting. Okay. All right. So yes, like, so the, like the Truman Show. Because like the moon in the Truman Show, you couldn't land on that. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Interesting. Okay. Taking that in. So there are certain scriptures even that people point to, yeah. right? Yeah. Are there? Okay. Do you want to discuss those for a second? Oh boy. Okay. So it, the, at least half of the flat earth community are strong Christians straight up. Mm -hmm. I did not know this going in. It, and because a lot of people came to me, it's like, okay, you've got to address the whole God issue. And then a lot of biblical scholars got into it and with a fine tooth comb went over the, the King James and came back to me and said, yeah, you know what? It's a flat earth book. Um, with the exception of one verse and one verse only, and there are pastors holding on by their fingernails to this, which is Isaiah 40, 22, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Well, circle in the ancient Hebrew is not ball, it's not sphere, it's not globe. But uh, quick stuff, uh, Genesis, uh, the firmament uh, mentioned in Genesis mm -hmm. that separates the waters above and below. Uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, jo the story of Joshua, where uh, Joshua said, hey, God, can you hold the star, you know, the sun and the moon in the sky for an extra day so I can slay more enemies? Oh, it makes way more sense. God just hits the pause button on the sky than trying to stop an entire solar system. I know God's an infinite, but I also think he's very, very efficient. Oh, so many references to... Uh, like four corners, right? Four corners of oh, the yeah, earth. Oh, yeah, yeah, four corners of the earth. Or mm -hmm. one of my favorite is Werner von Braun, you know, the founder of NASA. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. On his headstone, a lot of people know those. You can Google, look it up. You thought it'd be some elaborate thing where it's this concrete thing of him with a rocket pointing at the sky. No, it's just his name. Mm -hmm. uh, the day, the year he was born, the year he died, and it says Psalms 19.1. I didn't know what Psalms 19.1 was. I had to look it up. It says, and the sure. firmament shows his handiwork why would the father of nasa be talking about a domed structure above us is he reaching out from the grave yes. i think so that's interesting because i played a lot of his warnings about what they would use oh um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the the final alien yeah. agenda oh, please yep. i'm crossing my fingers yeah. you can't see it but it's like oh come on alien agenda i don't know it's uh it's coming uh it's definitely coming yeah, i, I mean, believe I thought COVID I thought COVID was bad. That's going to be worse because people are going to think they saw something with their own eyes. Yeah. So here's a great question um, from the audience for you. If Earth was created on the third day, because yeah. we're talking about the scripture portion of this, right. then uh, what was it orbiting? Because the sun, the moon, and the stars came the next day. Exactly. So if we have to orbit. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. No, the Earth wasn't orbiting anything. And and yeah, the sun, moon, and the stars, again, just the, the sky was decorated later which kind of falls in line with a lot of the virtual worlds we create. And I don't know if we want to get into that at all. But in the early mm -hmm. virtual worlds we create, the sky was just light and it was dark because we didn't know how to decorate anything. Uh, in a place mm -hmm. like this, I mean, again, you know, it's biblical. You know, the, the, a greater light to light up the day and a lesser light to, to keep us company at night and, you know, signs and wonders. And you can plant your crops based on stars and... And all that stuff. So no, the, nobody's orbiting anything. The, in fact, the sun and the moon are just very, very, very tiny. I mean, very, very small, less than 50 miles wide. But we don't know anything because human beings are terrible at perspective. And they're maybe, I don't know, 3,000 miles up. That's it. Again, right. very similar to the Truman Show. Whew. Okay. All right. Why do people get angry 
um, about this subject. I mean, like I said in the beginning, I'm very mixed on this. Yeah. Um, but I but I say that only because really and truly, I have I have looked into it probably not as as hardcore as some people have, and yeah. so I admit that too. And I'm always open to any conversation because I think that uh, we should be. But I would like to actually, you know what? Right. Shelve that for just a moment. I'm going to take a, a call from the audience, and then I would like to answer that. Hi, caller. Welcome to the show. Go right ahead. Hi, Mark. Hi. If a sailor man mm -hmm. is looking at another boat moving away from him yeah. at six feet on the surface, yeah. at mm -hmm. about eight miles, the boat goes, whoop, and it's gone. Right. Okay. Uh, I don't think the earth is flat. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, good no, no, no. That's that's a great question because the, the little Nazi flags all mm -hmm. over Antarctica. They drop they, they Nazi flags. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Let let's let them answer okay, that. Okay. So um, that no, that is the the number one proof that flat earthers are drawn to is long distance photography. When I made the clues, at no point in the clues did I say, "Hey, go to the beach with an HD camera." By the way, that was the real game changer here. Twenty years mm -hmm. ago, with your best okay. camcorders, you zoom in, it's still really blotchy and grainy. But HD has gotten so good that what happened was, yes, beforehand, you you'll see a boat go off into the distance, the boat goes away, and everyone's like, "Oh, it's gone over the curvature, right?" And we know this right. is the old seafaring story that go back forever. I was like, no, no, pull out your Nikon P900 or P1000 or whatever. We have ridiculous zoom quality now. You crank it up, the boat's right there. It's it's back in frame. And then you, then you let the boat go off again and again and again. In fact, the only limit to what we can see off into the distance is just the thickness of the atmosphere itself. Because some people will say, well, why can't we see Japan from California? Why can't we see Europe from New York? And why can't we see Mount Everest from everywhere? And it's like, well, because mm -hmm. you're not breathing in nothing. It's only 99.9% .9 transparent. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very, very transparent fog, but it, th it gets thickness over time, which is why, um, you know, when you, uh, if you're underwater, you're 200 feet down, the sun cannot penetrate. Uh, it just, okay. anyway, so, but yes, just, th that's, so yes, the, the, to answer his question, yes, you absolutely can see that boat. Just grab a camera, zoom back in. Okay. It'll, it'll be there. We have, we have another caller. Hi caller. Welcome to if the show. You, uh, you're on with take Mark. A laser, uh -huh. you go to Florida, okay. you can actually direct it to Cuba. And uh, if, if you just use the government's information, you'll find out that it's false because there is no curvature at eight inches per mile. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inch. And, and, and okay. yeah, by the way, I don't recommend the Florida to Cuba thing because the weather between Florida and Cuba is ugh, dicey at best. But okay. however, but he's absolutely right. And by the way, we didn't come up with the, the curvature formula. The curvature formula, and I'm not trying to freak people out because we've all forgotten eighth grade algebra, including me, which is eight, mm -hmm. it's eight inches per mile per mile otherwise known as eight inches per mile squared. So it's not like stairs. It, it eventually gets more and more severe. So like at 10 miles, it's um, 100 inches. Oh, sorry. No, 10 miles is uh, 10 times 10 times 80. Well, the point is, is that 100, at 50 miles, you're t talking like 1,700 feet plus, which means mm -hmm. you're looking over the side. Nothing on, on the 1,700 feet or less in height on the other side of the hill should be visible, but we can always see it, which is why I put the challenge. I go, show me a lighthouse at less than 100 miles. Show me a big structure that we cannot see. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Uh, we can, Interesting. And we, we have tons and tons of videos about this. Okay, and then uh, hat tip, Mike. Here's another question for you: The moon. Is it true that objects and surfaces in moonlight are cooler than moon shade, the opposite of sunshine? Sunshade. Yeah, that was one of those freaky ones that I couldn't believe it. When even I was into flat Earth for a year, and, and a caller brought that to my attention, and I'm like, get out of here. And so uh -huh. what what we're saying is is that in the moon, or so if it's 90 degrees in the sunlight, it's 80 degrees in the sunshade, right? Because it's a okay. shadow, right? Well, in the moonlight, it's the exact opposite. So let's say it's 50 degrees in the moonlight it's up to 60 plus degrees in the moon shade and it's like wait that what are you talking about i'm going meaning the moon is generating some sort of cold laser light i didn't even know this was a thing and yeah. we can actually do this in universities which is you know you can change the frequency of a laser and it's like not like you can turn something into an ice cube <laughs> but once it gets even weirder and i will take credit for this i go okay so you take a magnifying glass to sunlight uh, you can make it even hotter, right? You can burn paper and stuff. Well, if you take a magnifying glass to moonlight, what happens? Does it get even colder? It does. It absolutely gets colder. You can check check this with a $20 point and click infrared, infrared thermometer you uh, pick up at a hardware store. It's amazing. So interesting. Okay. Oh, by so the, by the way, does that prove flat earth? No, it does not. 
However, it absolutely destroys the relationship between the sun and the moon because everyone knows, like, the moon is reflecting sunlight. It's like, no, not with those results. It's not because at the very, at the most, it should be neutral. It should never go colder. That's like taking a flashlight and bouncing it off your wall and chilling lettuce on the other side with a reflection. Right. Can't happen. Okay. What's the barrier um, that they knew we were going to have a problem with going to the moon? That's why it was supposed to be a million to one shot that we went. What's the barrier? Oh, yeah, Can yeah, yeah. Can get through that barrier? No, and... no. Can't, can't get through it. Um, we, are in a, we are in a dome that they have not figured out. And, of course, that's a guy thing, isn't it? Right? So if you right. find the barrier back in the 50s, it's like, get the cannon. And you start firing <laughs> things like, what's uh, we have any bigger stuff? And they start, so they started nuking it from all the, look it up. This is, again, not secret information. From 58 right. until 62, the United States and the Soviets, all the tests were straight up. They were just painting the sky, just hitting them with everything they could. The first shots were megaton. The rest were uh, medium kiloton, 200 to 300 range, give or take. And they were just painting the sky. Basically, they were trying to figure out the arc of this thing so that when they did do a space program, and I'm using quotes here, uh, and, the, and the fake space race, they knew when to arc the rockets over so they didn't just okay. plow into these damn things. And by the way... We're but oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to go to a break. We have to go to a break. The computer's going to cut us off. But NASA is a very, very dark black budget on top of that comment. We'll be right back. Kate Daly Show. Very cool. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. Just, like, no, takes no. us. And so um, when we come back, make your point, though. Remember what that was so we can oh, yeah, come yeah. back on. Yep, 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 yep. And do you want to answer more calls? Uh, sure. I, I really? I don't, okay. I don't mind taking calls. You know you know we're going to have to do a part two, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Yeah, we. Okay, it's, so, it's it's funny. Every time somebody says, oh, yeah, yeah, we can do a podcast in like 30 minutes. I was going, good luck. Like, no. Yeah, that's it, there's no way. Yeah. And and here's the deal, too. Um, I, uh, I want to actually record with you so I can play it live next Friday. If you're up for that during this next week, I could do it at any time after the show. Sure. I just, uh, I, yeah, I'll, I'll be out next Friday, but I'm playing live shows while I'm gone. So ah. um, anyway, if you are game for that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Can do it. That'd be awesome. We have to do part two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's know, a... It's there... like it's like interviewing Ed Griffin for 30 like I, I used to laugh because Ron Paul comes on the show a lot and when Ron would come on I'm like I can't do 10 minutes with you I mean how are you supposed to describe anything in 10 minutes right. so I finally got him to 30 35 minutes 40 minutes because we why well, we just could never do it right. I mean there was they, what can you even say in that amount of time it's ridiculous not a lot by the way and by the way there's a um uh most of the people that have run into Flat Earth recently is because of the um the Netflix documentary <sighs> Oh yeah. yeah, it's yeah called Behind the Curve. Behind the curve. Because the director and the producers hated us so much, they had to come up with that I, title. Um, his name, the guy. Didn't... Sorry, you're fading in and out there for a second. Sorry about that. Hold on a second. Uh, second. I'm just queuing up a song. Oh, that's why. Okay. Okay, so um, I played. Um, I had on the show. A uh, funny thing happened. On the way to the moon. Oh, with Bart Sabrell. Oh. Yes, Bart. So I had Bart on, and we've talked about that. Man, so many pissed off people that grew up in the 50s and 60s that were like, yeah. <laughs> and how dare you take my childhood moment away? You know, I, we were just laughing because I'm like, you have to question it. I mean, come on, we didn't well, go back. You know, I mean, yeah, well, then again, though, what, and we're running into it now, which is whatever's on the news is obviously mm -hmm. objectively true. The the yeah, people in, in power would never ever lie to you, and so yeah, I Bart, saw it with my own eyes, yeah, right? yeah. Bart, Bart, mm -hmm. you know, Bart had has some good things. By the way, he does not like us oh. very much because we take away right. from the whole thing. But oh, okay. But now, fine. do you know David Villa, Villava? Uh, he old, did a whole bunch of YouTubes, old, like four hour uh, YouTubes about Villava, um, flat Earth. Um, David. I actually watched, that's what I watched on it, is when he touched on the subject and did YouTubes on it. David Villava? And, yeah, Villava. Now I'm going to have to, well, does he go by any, what's his handle, though? I don't think so. I think it goes by that, uh, V-I-L-L-A-L-V-A. 
And so it was his videos that that got me sort of questioning everything. Oh. But he um, actually I had written to him and he had written me back and um, uh, we'll come on at a later date. But, but it hit him, too. So it was his videos, too. Oh, cool. So cool, cool. They're, they're on YouTube. And he actually does quite a few graphics to kind of show the the NASA lies. Nice. The, you know. Yeah. And so I didn't know if you had heard of him. I, I, you know, I, probably by his content, by probably not by the name. Yeah. So. So it's like truth in something or, huh. but I think if you look up his name, I think it's on the YouTube account too. Well, but, I won't be able to look uh, it up right now because my cha no, no. my channel is now in I trouble just, because I, uh, oh, eh, uh, I said bad things about the whole vaccine thing. And so oh, they, yeah, join the club. <laughs> yeah, they, they came down on a lot of us, like a ton of bricks last night. Oh yeah. The no COVID COVID vaccine. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no. yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah. So we don't have a sample, but we have a test, and so and we have a vaccine. Anyway, it's so dangerous. I know I've been doing a lot of shows on that lately because DARPA did a whole bunch of stuff that they wanted to do, inject, and uh, and so all of a sudden, what they always do for the soldiers comes to us, you know. So kind of crazy, right? Well, anyway. and the soldiers are going to have to deal with it because what I hear is like in August, it's going to be FDA approved. Ugh. Which means the soldiers it's... then who opted out are going to be like, "Yep, sorry." <laughs> Getting... Yeah, and then 75 more shots on the way, which is just fabulous. Uh, it's like a slow turning process, you know, like Elon Musk says, like it can turn you into a butterfly. Yeah. Um. So just a, you know, slow process. Oh, okay. Oh, shoot. 14 seconds. Okay. One second. Okay. Today, call Prolong Medical Center at 435-375-5000. That's 435-375-5000. Together, we'll make a difference in your life. Talk lines are open now. Call 888-673-1450. This is the Kate Daly Show. Because that's just how I've kind of felt about it. But I'm always interested to hear what somebody says and what why somebody has come to the conclusion they have. I wish we would do more of this in America so that we could understand things a little bit more or at least have a conversation about them. And I really appreciate Mark doing this for us. And 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 also, I just wanted to say, get over to Balance of Nature, balanceofnature.com. Put in the code Kate when you order and get it ordered. Get it ordered. Get it get it into your body. That's actual health. You know, all year long, a uh, year and a half of, of, of talking about health but not health now we're actually talking about health go to balanceofnature.com it's a food supplement our food supply is a, is a load of crap and we really need to be supplementing that make sure that you take balanceofnature.com and put in the code word kate i do have a caller for you so we'll start here right off the bat hi caller go right ahead you're on with mark Sargent. hello hi there go right ahead caller yes you know i do believe uh he is very correct and there's many ways you can uh, analyze this. Mm -hmm. uh, for one, I'm a machinist, and I make parts for the SR-71 Blackbird, and I've talked to those guys, and they've told me that type of information. And so uh, given that said, then I started uh, verifying with lasers it, when I would go to Florida uh -huh. that I could shine it on the water, and there's no curvature at 8 inches per mile. And your eyeball can't zoom like a camera. That's why the boat disappears. Okay. Oh. And then... Uh, Okay. You can go to Pikes Peak and see more than five states at once. So that that kind of shoots okay. some holes in it as, as well. All right. And, thank uh, you. I really appreciate your call. You know, call. water maintains its own level as right. well. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I love it. Very love interesting it. show. And, okay. And I'm so glad that, that you, you uh, have this guy on. You got you it. Because it is definitely something that needs to be looked at. And firmament is the key to it all because mm, they don't okay. talk about water anywhere. Okay. Hey, thank you for that. I really actually appreciate these phone calls. We have another one for you. You're very popular, Mark. <laughs> oh, okay, God. here we go. Oh, I'm, all right. I'm, I'm trying to get there, trying to get there. Um, hi there, caller. You're on with Mark Sargent. Go right ahead. Yeah, this this is one of the most interesting conversations I've ever heard. Yeah. You know, I'm just a, a farmer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, water runs downhill. Uh, is there... Is there this flat earth is there an edge to it interesting uh, the, okay the That's edge well okay there's there's two things you could look at when it comes to the edge one is the antarctic coastline the edge no it's not 
uh, wherever the edge is, the outer marker or the edge of this snow globe, it's mm -hmm. several thousand miles in from the coastline of Antarctica. So that whole geographic South Pole that they talk about. By the way, one of those little uh, tidbits, uh, the compasses don't do anything in Antarctica. Uh, you'd think that, the you know, because up in the North Pole, you know, the magnet always dominates North. And I've asked guys, military guys down in the Southern Hemisphere, Southern, uh, like Australian military, I go, so when does the Southern Pole take over? When does the compass swing and go strong South? And he goes, it never goes strong south he goes you get to the south pole and he goes the compass is useless and i go okay so awesome. i have a call waiting i have a caller waiting but i have a very quick question for you yes. how is antarctica how is that body of land different than all the other continents then why why hide that one and make it so that no one can go there right 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 um so and the reason why you hide and so yeah the, the mainstream will say that antarctica is kind of like australia only covered in ice and mm -hmm. we for but in on our map the flat earth map which is identical to the un flag which mm -hmm. except that the un flag is missing antarctica which is weird why you would leave out an entire continent on a world map i don't know um but the reason why so in our model antarctica stretches around the entire thing like this giant ring of ice why would you hide that you'd hide that because human beings uh, are very very curious we love a mystery and you don't want people going to let's just call it the fence uh i use the wildlife preserve as an example you put a couple buffalo you, we've all seen wildlife preserves a thousand acres the animals are happy and frolicking they could care less about the fence however you put human beings in that same thousand acre wildlife preserve plenty of things to do there all they're going to do is focus on the fence It'll be like, why is the fence there? Who built the fence? Why am I on this side? Who's on the other side? Should we pray to the fence gods? Maybe we should sacrifice our neighbors. It would just degrade from there. What's the easiest okay. way to get rid of that? You hide uh -huh. the fence. You may, you tell them there is no fence at all. You could go around this world round and round and round and round. You're never going to run into the edge. It's like you know going around an orange. It's brilliant. It's, okay. and, and it works. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, caller, you're on with Mark Sargent. Go right ahead. Hey, just a quick question and mm -hmm. comment. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm like a lot of people where uh, I didn't really look into into the flat earth thing until mm -hmm. because it was so far down the list. But mm -hmm. after you run out of so many things to dig on, mm -hmm. you, you come across it eventually. And there's so many um, pretty compelling things that come up. Yeah. Um, you, you already just covered what I wanted to ask or talk about, which was the old U USGS map yeah. that is the flat earth map. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's also the UN logo, yep. um, which kind of maybe further indicates that the globe map is false. And okay. so um, could you maybe comment sure. on that or, or elaborate? Yeah, Thank yeah, yeah, yeah. Go right ahead. The, uh, the, the, the official term for the map, which is used by the USGS, uh, is called the azimuthal equidistance. And I know that's kind of a mouthful, and it took me about uh, six months to actually say it correctly. So we call it the AE map. It is really, really strange. It was, it's been around for a long, long time, like a thousand years. I think it was first created by a, a Persian scientist, the, the whole perspective. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that the USGS, you can look it up, it's on wiki, uh, I can't remember, map projections. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the only thing with annotations next to it, which is the USGS uses it. It's also the UN flag. Oh yeah, and by the way, it's also the map used by the, the Flat Earth proponents. Two of those th groups are absolutely legit, but obviously the Flat Earth people are crazy. It's like, well, how can you how can you have both? How can the UN flag That's be true. totally legit? And it's like, well, because it's a projection. It's not the real thing. It's like, why is it on your flag then? And you know, That is interesting. Yeah. And and I also wanted to, that that is weird. I also wanted to ask you, has there ever really been a complete photo of the earth? Mm. Because we see it partially where it's partially dark and part part of it lights up. Great, great question. Okay, so the first what you can look again, look this up. It's called the blue marble shot. The first blue marble shot, which is the the earth in its entire disc form you know a, a perfect okay. circle if you want to you know because it, uh, it being sunlit sure. the first one was taken by apollo 17 the very last apollo mission on their way back why they didn't do it from 9 until 16 i don't know but they waited until yeah. the very last second it's like oh you better take a shot of this earth in 1972 that's the first blue marble shot of the earth you know when the second one was summer what? of 2015 for what? 43 years, they never took another shot like that. And then, and I only knew this because Obama tweeted it 
And Scott <laughs> Kelly, the astronaut, he was the one that wrote the press release, supposedly, from the space station. It said, hey, you know, Obama said, oh, the second blue marble shot of the Earth. And it's like, what? That's interesting. Yeah. Was that around the same time that the other astronaut, Buzz, went down there and said something evil was going on in Antarctica? Oh, he, no, he did that the year after. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, where he okay. was air, yeah, when he was <laughs> airlifted. Timeline. Yeah, he was airlifted out of Antarctica. And I'm going, what is he even doing there? It's yeah. like, why, why are you even there? So the point is, is why didn't they take another shot? I mean, we're talking 43 years. That's an infinite amount of time in the space world. I mean, that's, that's most of the 70s, all the 80s, all the 90s, 2000, 2010, halfway to 2020. How does that even happen? And it happened. You know why? Because that's when we started rolling. That's when we started picking up a lot of steam was in that summer. And yeah. Okay, that is weird. Yeah. <laughs> I have to admit, yeah. that's odd. Yeah. I mean, odd that we didn't go back to the moon and, 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 and do a heck of a lot more study on the moon. And then it's also weird that all the records disappeared that from the flight and uh, the astronauts looked like somebody had punched them in the gut when they got back yeah. and had to speak about it. There's a lot of weirdness. Absolutely. I, 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 Absolutely. Well, yeah. real quick, um, the, the first, your first iPhone, if you remember that, there was an Earth background. And Apple contacted NASA and it's like, uh, can we have a backer? It's like, no, we don't have any because they only had the Apollo 17 shot. They had to create it from scratch. They had to 3D Photoshop it. Rob Simmons, you can look it up, wonderful articles mm. on him where he says, yeah, it's Photoshop because it has to be. He goes, he had to completely 3D model that entire thing. And it's like, okay, why do I care? Why do I care? Because I was down at the Kennedy Space Center and I saw that image, the Rob Simmons iPhone image. It was actually sitting on the wall on one of their displays and I'm going, and I've showed the documentary team. I'm going, look, this image right here. The, and we knew how bad it was because the, the lower hemisphere was Photoshopped with a cloning tool to death. He photo, it was like a Friday. It's like, oh, there's wings and you gotta get happy hour. And he just, he, he has cloned all the clouds. It was ridiculous. That's so, that's so strong. Okay, so, so big question here, because I know we only have a few minutes, but we are going to do another episode, uh, Mark and I. Um, so are you, so the big why, why? Why do it? If this is true, yeah. why the lie? Why hide it? Why not tell everybody? Yeah, okay, let's what? say you figure it out in 1960, because you didn't have the technology to figure it out. You could be the king of France and 1500 and wooden ships and horses isn't going to do anything for you. Unless you have planes, you don't know anything. And let's say you figure out in 1960, and then you say, okay, maybe we should tell everybody. And it's like, okay, what's the worst that could happen? And then all of a sudden, a guy at the end goes, all right, think about this. He goes, academia. He goes, astrology, I'm sorry, <laughs> astronomy and astrophysics yeah. shuts down forever. And all the remaining physical sciences, biology, hydrology, archaeology, those have to be retooled. Libraries, libraries have to be emptied out and refilled. Uh, world markets have to be suspended for months because we have to figure out what it means. And by the way, the five major religious houses of the world, um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Christianity, you're giving them all leverage against science simultaneously and you're telling them to show restraint. He goes, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> he goes, That's interesting. it could be chaos. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden everyone says, yeah, we're just going to hold on to this for a while. And they did. And they kept it a secret for 50, 60 okay. years. And I, I mentioned the black budget. You know, NASA has, has received any money they've truly ever wanted to receive. And there's a lot of money, I think, hidden in the NASA budget. Yeah. And there's a lot of tape that reveals that I think oftentimes they are not where they are supposed to be right. because there's really, really crazy footage of them not being honest when they say they're in space. Right. Let's say that. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. $54 million a day they, they get, and that's public. That's at least what we release to the public. You can do huge amounts with with that, and yet their production values are absolutely terrible. I've got wonderful shots, you know, uh, just still shots from Apollo, where it's like, okay, there's footprints on the ground in this nice fluffy ash, but there's no burn crater. Um, the, the, the shadows aren't running parallel, even though there's only one light source, which is the sun. Um, that dish has is a VHF transmitter connected to a 1969 car battery that has a range of 50 miles, and it's supposedly doing 10 frames of color video a second over a quarter million miles through the Van right. Allen belts. It's just there's the longer you the stare, yeah, yeah. The long, Sorry. the longer you stare at, the worse it gets. You know. This is an interesting conversation. You know, when that guy said, I'm just a farmer, don't ever say you're just a farmer. Farmers are some of the smartest people I've ever met oh, yeah. um, in this land. Um, but let me just say this. Um, it does provoke so many questions. I don't think any thinking person that has been taught to critically think, as most of the audience in the show, you can't not think about these things. Yeah. I mean, 
You're bringing up some very good points, I have to say. Well, thank you. The the wor- yeah. There's a great line from the Truman Show, which is, mm-hmm. the world is, we believe the world that is presented to us. Just think that, about yeah. who presents you the world and all the aspects of it. And if they can lie about something, what wouldn't they lie about? How's that? Hmm. Well, you know, I just asked G. Edward Griffin the, that, that basic question. How much in that last, <clears throat> sorry about that, 120 years have we been lied to by government? What's funny is I had the same exact number in my head, which is really ironic. But he said 97% have been lies. Yeah. 97% because the 3% is just the things like a road is made out of such and yeah. such, which, okay, it's, you know, there, there's no reason to lie. Yeah. But the control, the the profit, the taxation, the profit, yeah. the taxation, the profit. I mean, we could talk about that for a long time because there's a lot to gain from lying. Absolutely. Right? absolutely. Napoleon's great quote, which mm-hmm. is history is just lies that are agreed upon. Interesting, because that the Antarctica question truly is, and I've I've said this to the audience many times. Something, I mean, obviously, is so strange about the fact that the enemy, so to speak, we have all these enemies, but they all we all come together and agree that no one else gets to go down to Antarctica, and that's right. a strange, strange idea, and people do not think about it enough. I don't know why. They don't ask the questions. Uh, so. Out of sight, out of mind. It is a very hostile yeah. environment. People don't want to go there. And the government makes sure that it is kept very low on the radar. Interesting. Okay. So when we do, um, when we come together again next week, I because I, I, I'm definitely doing a part two to this, as you could probably imagine. Oh. I have a lot more questions and so does the audience. Phones are still lighting up. So when you come back to, I want to tackle all those questions because I actually had a whole spreadsheet of questions that skeptics ask and we'll get, we'll do that. Are you cool with that? Absolutely. When you come back, we'll go, nothing, we'll kind of run those out. Nothing right? is off limits. Okay, I like that. Mark Sargent. Mark Sargent. Interesting hour. I think I'm going to be rolling around this in my in my brain for a while. So, um, the book is Flat Earth Clues. Sky's the limit. Lot to think about here. You probably want to listen to this again, um, and you can get it on podcast at katedallyradio.com within the hour. And so, I just want to thank you, Mark, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, I'll be right back. Um, Well, I won't be back. I'll be back Monday. But be faithful, be fearless. Go to katedallyradio.com and, uh, of course, see you Monday. Okay, that was cool. Cool. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was really fun. It was really fun trying to kind of peruse these things around. Yeah. Um, and so uh, definitely uh, f- figure out, you know, what day. I, t- uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays work the best for me after like right around five o'clock. Okay. If you're available for that, we can tape it and then I'll, I'll slice it up and we can play it on uh, Friday. Let's do it because uh, I have a podcast on Tuesday at seven. Uh, okay. Well, it's your choice. How long? How long do you think you're gonna? It'll take. We'll probably be. Um, we'll probably be about forty-five minutes. Oh, so, let's let's do it Tuesday then. Yeah. Okay, let's do it Tuesday. Um, I'll call you. I'll Skype you right at five. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah. So five o'clock. Or like five fifteen. No, that's 5:15? that's totally fine. No, five's fine if you want to do it five. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it at five. And I uh, really appreciate it. I'll have to I'll have to uh, text uh, Mike and tell him big thank you. And, you know, it's funny because people worry, you know, will this ostracize, you know, very large audience? We just hit over two million, one hundred fifty thousand in podcast nice. listens alone. That's after the live show. And the thing is, is <coughs> like the farmer said, I just want to hear something new. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear something new. And and the thing is, is <coughs> geez almighty. All right. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that, uh, yeah, seriously, I'm coughing up a lung. <laughs> that um, people just want to like hear um, somebody make some sense, have some questions, and yeah. <coughs> holy crap, and uh, and really kind of think, you know, yeah, think about stuff exactly. outside the box. So I like that. Agreed. Very cool. All right, I'm going to call you Tuesday. Uh, Thank you. All right, get a lozenge. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. Yeah. Bye. See you. This is Mark. Hey, how are you? I am good. How about you? I'm excellent. Sorry about the time thing. Oh, no. I told it you... 7 Eastern, but it, no, it's... No, no. I'm in so many time zones. It's a little insane. Sorry. You are just simply a horrible person. I really am. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's just cut to the chase. I'm terrible. <laughs> I looked it um, up, and actually, when you type in horrible person into Google... I it, come up. It's my face, apparently. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it, it comes up as a question. Is Kate Daly a horrible person? It's like, wow. That's really, Let's debate. <laughs> that's so specific. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. All right, so let's do like 35 minutes. Are you cool with that or 30 I minutes? Can I do, can actually cut that up into an hour. We can do it whatever you want. We can do a whole thing, whatever you got time okay. for. I got time today. I think 30, 35 minutes I think should be fine because that usually that gives me actually a little more to work with, so we're good. Okay, right. so by the time I come in and out of breaks and stuff because I have to record all that tonight uh, okay. for Friday. So, Okay, um, here we go. Let's start. All right. Mark Sargent is my guest. Uh, the book is Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. And if you remember last week when we did a show with Mark, we were talking about all of these things uh, surrounding flat earth, okay? And I have never done this subject on the show before, and that's kind of rare considering I've done about every subject you can imagine. But I invited Mark on, and uh, Mark, of course, has all the YouTube videos, uh, flat earth clues, the sky's the limit. You can get that in paperback. Uh, you can get that in many ways, actually, right on Amazon. But I welcome you to the show, Mark, for the for the part two. <laughs> I like this. this yeah, and you know what? I've been doing this for six years, so what took you so long? I know, right? I, I don't know why we never covered it. I think they're great questions. I think that I'm I'm still sort of mixed on the subject, and so I've looked into it before, but I actually like listening. I'm one of those that just wants to ask a lot of questions, and I like listening to the answers. Yeah. And there were people, of course, you know, that told me right after the show, oh, you know, you've sold out. That's it. And I thought, <laughs> if, if that's the case, if that's the case, something is very wrong, because the minute I stop asking questions, I shouldn't be doing the show, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so I absolutely love that you're willing to tackle this and we'll go through all the kind of the skeptics questions and sure. why the ridicule, you know, you know, if somebody asks pretty decent questions and I thought you brought up some pretty relevant points yeah. uh, in the last show we did. Why, why the ridicule? Straight up conditioning. Uh, it goes back as long as, <clears throat> excuse me, you've been in school. So mm. think about this, uh, in the corner of our classroom in the United States, anyway, you have the American flag, right? And we pledge mm -hmm. allegiance to it and, and. By the time you reach your senior year of high school, you know, 12 years later, there are some people that join the military simply just based on the flag. They've been seen in the corner right. of their room. Well, right below that flag usually is a little toy globe that you can spin around. And we okay. don't pledge allegiance or anything to it, but it just sits there quietly in the classroom. And basically, it's like you look up, flag, that's where I live. To look down, mm -hmm. the globe, that's where I live. It's amazingly strong conditioning to where... Uh, out of all the conspiracies that are out there, and we're not going to rattle them off, this is the only one you really can't run away from. It, meaning, it's kind of like the Matrix, the red pill, blue pill thing, where it's like all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, by the way, the world you think you live in, yeah, that's not it. And mm -hmm. people freak out. They, they, I mean, the, the line from the Matrix is very pertinent, which is uh, we don't uh, awaken minds after a certain age. And it's kind of right. like the, the only comparison I can have is like telling someone after they're 30, and I know you're like 22, but after oh, they're yeah. 30, that, uh, <laughs> uh, that they're adopted. Imagine uh, somebody coming to you and saying, yeah, sure. man, pretty sure you're adopted. I have proof right over here. And you'd be like, no, get out of here. No, no whatever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, if you even have an inkling that that, mm -hmm. that might be the case, all of a sudden it, it ripples back in time. And you start mm -hmm. questioning all these things. But yeah, it's so, so short answer, a whole bunch of conditioning. That's all it took. Very, very quiet conditioning, by the way. Yeah. Interesting. It's, well, the only, I, it's the only I, thing we debunk to children, by the way. It's we don't talk to children about anything, you know, about any other conspiracy. But we first grade, it's it's right out of the gate, which is oh yeah. By the way, we used to think the world is flat. Now it's this spinny thing, spin, 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 mm -mm. and that's it. That's all it takes. Okay. All right. Well, there was a there was an article, and it was about how to prove that the earth was round uh, to a flat earther. Yeah. And so of course you covered the first one uh, and you you know watch a ship fall off to the sea. You covered that in the last podcast. Yeah. But here was the second one, watch a lunar eclipse. Uh, solar yeah. eclipses get all the intention, but if you're able to catch a glimpse of the sol lunar eclipse it says, yeah. you can see evidence that the earth is indeed round. Here how here's how it works. Earth passes between the moon and sun so that the sun projects earth's shadow onto the moon in the night sky. Yep. A so you've, perfect, you've a perfect textbook answer. Absolutely, okay. quality answer. However, 
uh, <laughs> it is it is just a textbook. I mean, you got to remember, there's only 500 people that have even have claimed to have been to space. When anyone talks about anything in the sky, I don't care if it's a lunar eclipse or solar eclipse or stars or comets or some weird mm -hmm. galaxy thing you're looking at or whatever the Hubble pictures are, I say, okay, they're just pretty, pretty lights in the sky that predate language. It's basically just an ornate clock. If I go to a planetarium and I say, okay, do you see Jupiter up there? They go, yeah. I say, okay, can you land on it? No, why not? Because it's just a pretty image on a screen. It's a projected image. However, think about this. Think about taking someone from, I don't know, a mm -hmm. really strict Amish community or someone from 200 years in the past, take them into a planetarium and show them th those same lights on the ceiling. We take it for granted, but you show them those same lights, they're going, holy smokes, how is the moon doing that? And it's like, because it's not real. It's like, what? That's so weird. They, they wouldn't get it. I mean, it's it's just right. the level of technology we live in. So anyway, sorry, sorry. Everything yeah. in the sky is just a projection. That's all it okay. is. Okay, because they said if the moon looks orange, that's a that's a sign of a lunar eclipse. If you've ever seen a total lunar eclipse, you probably noticed that the shadow did not look like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, <laughs> that, that was one of those things that always bugged me, which was like the solar eclipse shadow was way too small. Uh, you know, that's like the moon is, um, so when, you know, the, the, the moon, when it passes supposedly in front of the sun, it casts a shadow on the earth, right? And mm -hmm. the moon's supposedly 2,000 miles wide. Well, the, the blackout shadow, the total blackout shadow is only 70 miles wide, which is pretty much what we say the moon is. It's, uh, so it's like, tell me, tell me what mm -hmm. optical effect can shrink a shadow down 90 something percent. It's like you walking next to a wall on a sunny day and your shadow mm -hmm. turns into an action figure. It never happens. It's never has happened. So mm -hmm. the, the bigger question is, okay, so it's the lunar eclipse. So let's say the moon, the, the earth passes in front of the sun. The earth's supposedly 8,000 miles wide, four times wider than the, the moon. Why isn't the blackout zone on the moon 250 miles wide? Why doesn't the moon turn into a giant scary eyeball? Hmm. No, no one will touch it. So anyway. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the next one was climb a tree. Climb a tree. What? That's a, that's a, that's a, about proof? Well, I was kind of laughing at this one too, but if you climb up really far, your line of sight will extend to the horizon. That's because parts of the earth were concealed from view by its curvature. Oh, uh, yeah. It works the same on, on a flat thing. You go up higher, you get to see farther. That's just how it works. Uh, in fact, the world record photography, are, of course, is taken from mountains, but no, it's not the curvature. And I take challenge anyone anyone that says climb a tree or climb a mountain or whatever it is uh mm. to show me oh boy how am i gonna say this to show me an object in the distance that's i don't know 150 miles or less that you can't see with hd technology that's what's changed this i mean we wouldn't even be talking right now if hd cameras weren't around that's what convinced everybody is they went to the beach and beforehand the beach the boat was gone it is gone forever you cannot see it anymore they don't have to climb a tree all they do is zoom in with their cameras and they can see it and it blows the curvature of the we didn't come up with the curvature formula it blows it out of the water okay all right uh travel through or even within different time zones um so <laughs> If you are on the right commercial flight, maybe able to see the curvature of the Earth on with your own two eyes. It says okay. uh, anyone, and I, I made a special video. Of course, my YouTube mm -hmm. channel is probably going to be torn down soon uh, because mm -hmm. of the uh, I said horrible things against the whole pandemic recently. Right. So, but that's okay. I made a video on my channel. It's still up now. If anyone wants it, you're more more happy to email me. And it was a wonderful speech given by Neil deGrasse Tyson, the world's most famous scientist. Mm -hmm. uh, who went on stage and he said, no, no, per no civilian will ever see the curvature of the earth. And I've, I've had thousands and thousands of people say, I've seen it from an airplane. I go, okay, he, what he was doing was he was criticizing the Red Bull jump. Do you remember that when Red Bull sent a guy up to like mm -hmm. 130,000 feet and had him, it was like a world record parachute jump, but he jumped out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they, what they did was they used a really, really, if you know what a fisheye lens is, which is a wide angle lens, which is a peephole lens, uh, mm -hmm. you know, which creates this massive curvature. Everyone knows when you look at a peephole, sure. the, the, the hallway isn't curved, but right. it looks like it. So anyway, he jumps out of this thing and the, the, the earth is in this amazing curvature. And Neil deGrasse Tyson goes on and, and to this big audience, he goes, look, it was completely from a scientific standpoint, very, very dishonest. He goes, mm -hmm. you cannot see the curvature from 130,000 feet. It can't be done. He goes, that stuff is flat and he's mm. very uh, adamant about this well if that's 130,000 feet which is what four times higher than a commercial jet airliner 
then what mm-hmm. are you seeing? And again, it's not that I'm I'm saying that these people are lying. I'm saying it's it's um Orwellian, uh, meaning it's not that they see the curvature; they want mm-hmm. to see the curvature. It's that five lights, four lights thing, and that is I've I've talked to pilots who said right. in front of the plane, he goes, "It's absolutely flat." The problem is, is that we're told so many times growing up that there's a curve that you want to see it. And I, I mean, I've had people say, forget about planes. I've had people say they've seen the curvature from the beach. Mm. Thousands of people are like, no, anyone challenges that. Look, look it up. Ask Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's and, and I send that video yeah. to him. I go, is he lying? And I've even had some people come back and say, well, he doesn't represent us. He could be wrong. It's like, uh, really? Because he's the world's most famous scientist. Anyway. Okay. So if you were to fly all the way around the world, you'd find that it would be nighttime in part of the world and daytime in another part. Right. The time zones, the famous time zone question. Mm-hmm. Okay. The problem. <laughs> uh-huh. Here's the thing with time zones. Uh, mm-hmm. When you look at the, any diagram of the Flat Earth model, the problem is when we illustrate it and other people illustrate it, mainstream media mostly, they draw a sun and the moon that are really, really huge. In fact, the moon's actually, they, they draw that about 2,000 miles wide, what they say it is. But the sun, they make it really, really huge. And okay. that's the only way you can see it on, on this map. Well, we say the sun is tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, it's maybe 50 miles wide. So if, if you have a light source, it's only 50 miles wide. Yeah, time zones are no problem whatsoever. The problem is, is that everybody thinks this this giant ball. I mean, forget about the, the mainstream thing that the sun is 400,000 miles wide or something like that. Let's say if it's even only 5,000 miles wide. Yeah, it would light up the whole, the whole thing. But it's not. It's tiny, super tiny and super close. There you go. Hmm, okay, that all produces, right. So that produces here. time zones. It's very, very easy to do. Okay, and the next one was watch a sunset. So watch a sunset from point A, and yeah. then once the sun is out of sight, hurry on over to point B. With the added elevation provided by point B, you should be able to see the sun up above the horizon. If the Earth were flat, the sun would not be visible at any ev- uh, elevation once it had set. Because Earth is round, the sun will come back into your line of sight. Yep. If you don't have a hill, you could even try lying on your stomach to watch the sunset, then standing up to get a higher line of sight. Yeah. This is an extension of the boat problem, which is the boat goes over the horizon and the <laughs> sun goes over the horizon. But since the sun is really, really bright, it should be easier to tell. Again, the sun goes off into the distance. We have done some amazing movies on this where the sun doesn't actually set. It just goes away, meaning the thickness of the atmosphere. Remember, what we're breathing in, what we're talking in right now is, is only 99% transparent. And it gets more and more thick at, with, with distance. So mm-hmm. and, and, because, and because the sun is really, really small, it just goes away. We've seen videos where it just shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. And the, the, even the better videos, again, on my channel, but I can re- refer to other ones, where you zoom, same, in, same thing. If you have a filter on your camera, you zoom, zoom in on the sun that has been setting. You can pop it back up in the frame. It doesn't set anymore. And you can keep doing that until eventually it just fades away. It, it's mind-blowing when you watch the videos. It's incredible. Okay. All right. Measure shadows across the country. Pick two locations that are the same distance apart, grab two sticks or dowels of equal length, two tape measures in front, and you'll take one stick and dowel and one tape measure to your, lo- to your location, stick the object in the ground, and measure the shadow. Yeah. For accuracy, you should take your measurements at the same time of day. Yep. Yeah. This is the famous sticks and shadows argument. Otherwise, On a flat earth, by the way, it says the shadow that is cast by each would be of the same length. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay, the sticks and shadows argument, uh, and I'm actually su- surprised more people haven't brought this up. However, the general public doesn't understand it anyway. Uh, mm-hmm. The sticks and shadows argument works exactly the same if, okay, so the sticks and shadows thing that you were talking about there assumes that the sun is 93 miles, million miles away and very, very huge, right? Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. works the exact same way. You can test this out with flashlights and pencils if you want. We've also got movies on that. It also works the same if the sun is very, very small and very, very close. Okay. So that's basically it. A, anyone that, that throws that at me, I, again, I'll refer them to movies. You can look them up. They're, they're not hard to find. They're also on uh, most of these questions. And just the audience knows I did not get a copy of these questions in advance. I've been asked these for, nope. forever. <laughs> not at all. The, um, uh, I highly recommend if anyone wants, wants to watch all the movies on this, because we've got it all laid out uh, in the most wonderful app. It's called the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Uh, you can find it anywhere. Just plug in that question and it'll, it'll link you to a movie and you can watch the whole thing. Okay. Yep. I didn't All make right. the app, by the way. I don't get a dime from it. 
my friend okay. my friend David Weiss does, but I know that he would appreciate the uh, the plug because he has buttons for this. It's like, what about the sunsets? What about the sticks and shadows? You only okay. click one button, you're in. Yep. The last one was uh, Google International Space Station photos. Seriously, <sighs> just look at some of the amazing photos you'll find. Okay. Anyone, I, I, unfortunately, I have to give one of those Tom Cruise answers from Mission Impossible. It's it's worse than you think, which okay. is, look, the ISS production value, the inside production value of the ISS, and I am a huge media guy, and I'm a big believer in good writing and good plot devices. It is atrocious. I don't know who's directing and producing the interior shots, the ISS. They're horrible. And the exterior shots aren't great either. Um, I'll bring up, how many examples can I bring up? Uh, the black marble shot. You've heard of the blue marble series, which mm -hmm. is uh, uh, the, the the first blue marble shots ever okay. taken. Look look up the controversy behind black marble, which was taken okay. supposedly by the ISS or some other satellite, where uh, they're they're showing all these points of light on the dark side of the Earth, right? And I remember mm -hmm. the famous one where they showed this all the cities in the western part of Australia, right? It was lit up like Christmas. There are no mm -hmm. cities in the western part of Australia. <laughs> it's like the, it was completely photoshopped, and everyone was like, "Uh, well, there were a lot of brush fires that year." And it's like, uh -huh. "What? No, no, it, everything." NASA, and I, I hate to say this, but uh, look, the moon mission has been suspect for a long, long time. I mean, ever mm -hmm. since they left in 1972 and never went back, no one questions it. Every time I ask somebody, it's like, "Look, I've heard every president since Reagan." Say we're right. committed to going back to the moon. They just keep kicking that can down. Tr Trump's gone. Who's that is true. Yes. Yeah, that is true. And it does kind of people, I think, get really emotional about that one because it's part of the existence of that time, part of the the um, oh yeah yeah what, yeah well, can, story of our lives. You know I, what I mean? Can, Watching it. Can I TV. bring up a, another journalist real quick? Sure. Okay. So Dana Perino, you know, mm -hmm. her, you know, probably yep. probably get better. Yeah. The uh, Dana Perino, I remember her on uh, a show a couple of years ago where they were, we were involved and, and she was quite, it was the whole question of the moon mission. And she, she said, she, it was the, the greatest quote. She was, I believe in the moon missions because I'm a patriot. It's like, okay, um, I get it. Would basically mean that answer. Yeah, if you're an American, and I know she was a press secretary. If, mm -hmm. if you are an American, you should believe whatever the government tells you when it comes to this stuff. And I was like, yeah, but you're putting a lot of faith into something that that you know that can be bent in certain ways. And uh, sorry, the moon mission, I could tear apart six ways from Sunday. And yeah, everything. Oh, ISS, every everything's fake. Everything's fake. And people, I've had people come to me and say, "Okay, the moon missions are a piece of junk, but you can't tell me the ISS is fake." And I was like, oh, "Look, do you know anything about the rules of crime? If you fake one thing, you might as well fake everything because the punishment's the same if you ever get caught. So mm. you might as well do it." And again, NASA gets their budget is fifty four million dollars a day. Yeah, do you know what sort of black programs you could sponsor with that? Um, the, it is a huge black budget, and there are a lot of things about the moon landing that are very strange. I wish people would actually kind of take a look at. Um, here's it's so true though. Here you're messing with everyone's childhood. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. So, um, I, I look, look. Look. I love. I love truth. America. Look. I wave the flag. Rah rah. Go team. We're the greatest. I get that. But my my big problem was when they started doing this. They uh, they took advantage of people's patriotism, and right. it's like yeah. And then they just kept, took it too far. Now they've just got they've been so sloppy. That's the part that bugged me. It's like look, mm -hmm. you, you spend more of that fifty four million dollars a day and actually make good stuff because right. the internet's gonna shred it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, and people are they're asking a lot of questions. So if the Earth is flat, yeah. what is its shape? Because most flat Earthers believe, uh, you know, that it's a circular disc. Right. But could it be square with the four corners, as the Bible suggests? Uh, you know, what experiment might we do to find out? Oh, okay. So yeah, short version: uh, the Earth is a snow globe. It's plain and simple. Okay. Uh, if you want to say terrarium, planetarium, I've had other radio station people say pizza box. It's like okay, okay. I, I'm not sure what your audience is. But mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a it at the very least it's got walls and a floor and a ceiling. Could it be squared off at the edges and could be the dome? Could the dome be an illusion? Yeah, well, the virtual worlds we use everything is squared off. Um, Computer engineers hate curves. Uh, mm -hmm. They love right angles. Computers can't even draw uh, circles or you know spheres. Mm -hmm. It's all just a series of angles. That's why pixels are square. Uh, they you, I wouldn't even know how to program one, and I've done development. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, absolutely could be squared off at the edges. No, no question. And that's biblical to a, to a certain extent. Okay. And uh, what causes ocean tides? Are they synchronous <laughs> with the position of the moon and the sun in our sky? Right. Okay. I can tell you what doesn't cause ocean tides, and that's some <laughs> directional. Because remember, in, in our model, because people have said, well, in the flat earth model, if the, what, the moon's really small, does it control the tides? I go, no, uh, you control the tides from down below. I mean, the last thing you want to do is turn the, the moon into this super powerful electromagnetic magnetic force that would control the tides. And by the way, it's also interesting that the tides, here's the whole electromagnetic thing, uh, the mm -hmm. tides only work on oceans. Why? Because, and you've probably done this experiment in school, maybe you haven't, where you, you know, you can, um, uh, water doesn't conduct, conduct electricity, we can't complete a circuit until you add salt to it. Mm. Yeah, so, okay. uh, but yeah, so no, it's, it's controlled by, uh, things on the ground. It's completely artificial. The moon has nothing to do with the tides at all. Hmm. All right. So how is it a ship or airplane can travel all the way around the Antarctic continent in less time than it takes to travel from New York to England? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Tell me, give me, an, give me an example of that. <laughs> find, yeah. find me documents. I've been waiting for them. Find me documents from someone that circumnavigated Antarctica, uh, mm -hmm. that, that we can see and give us, and more importantly, Give us the latitude and longitude coordinates when that happens, which is sort of like the plane issue, which was in the original clues. I know you probably didn't watch the clues, which is mm -hmm. what's interesting is when you fly overseas over any body of water, if you're flying over an area of water that has no islands with transponders on it, your latitude and longitude, and you can look this up, your GPS goes into estimated or approximated mode. Which mm -hmm. means they don't know where you are. They roughly know where you are, but they don't know exactly where you are. It's like, how is that possible? The GPS system, which was designed by the U.S. Uh, DOD, uh, that's a 32 satellite overlaying blanket thing. And yet planes can go down in oceans and we have no idea where they are. Look at, um, what was that Malaysia 370 thing that went down a while? You know, triple seven yep. flagships. Right redundant black boxes no idea where that thing went it's like this is the indian ocean why because it was in part of the world that the gps system doesn't track i challenge anyone it's like find find me give me the gps coordinates of of anything regarding antarctica or long distance flights okay all right and i really appreciate you answering all these questions no, no, it's what i do it probably feels like the you know the firing squad when you're you know when somebody's like and what about this and what about this yeah but I, but I, believe I it or not it. that's how it started six years ago and i don't mind at all interesting all right well some say the moon is flat too do you believe the moon is flat too because we can only see one side of it, so that's... Well, that's yeah, I know, right? One of those weird coincidences, but I'm doing air quotes here, coincidences about the moon. Uh, one, how it, we only see, it, not, just, ju not just one side, exactly one side. It doesn't even change a quarter of a degree in 100 years. And, mm -hmm. and people are like, wow, and the scientists are like, wow, that's really strange. It's like, uh, that's all you got is strange. It also fits exactly in front of the sun. Why? Because it's 400 times closer and 400 times more narrow. Wow, also a coincidence. So is, you know, is the, the moon flat? Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, the pla in a planetarium, it's flat, although it looks spherical. Again, you walk into a, pla yeah. a high-end planetarium, it looks very spherical. But it's only right. a 2D image. We can do amazing things with software. Imagine what we could do if we had another, I don't know, thousand years. Right. Because okay. we, remember, uh, we didn't build this place. We had nothing to do with the building of this place. We, uh, we, we're only keeping the secret. There you go. Okay, so all the evidence from our space programs. I always like it when they when they say all the evidence because of government. But yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, all the evidence, uh, those of many countries, too, are consistent with the round rotating Earth and conventional solar system yeah. to a very high precision. They're all in the same same camp. So yeah. the very fact that we can use conventional physics to plot uh, complex paths for space probes that do, in fact, reach their calculated intended targets yeah. with only minor course corrections of evidence and the correctness of our mathematics... Oh. Oh and physics okay. okay first off the just the framing of that question and i know you didn't write it uh that you've immediately <laughs> lost 97 percent of your audience with that question right uh because it's look the math club and the physics club in high school super super small all right for a reason okay. 
Okay, first off, there are only six countries with launch capability out there. Uh, well, we'll just take the European Union. I know that's more than one country. Uh, Japan, Soviet, uh, sorry, Russia. Soviets. Yeah, Soviets, uh, Russia, China, um, the United States, and oh, crap. Who is the sixth one? Doesn't really matter. Um, one of them wasn't Israel, by the way, and they supposedly landed a probe on the moon, moon uh, a year ago. I, we laughed at that because I had to wiki that. It's like um, they don't even have launch capability. <laughs> Who the hell's running yeah, this broadcast? That is, that is interesting. But mm -hmm. uh, does that mean the, the bigger question there, and I, I don't care about the precision. It's like, look, math is not going to save you. Physics are, is not going to save you because you're not up there. I don't care if the Greeks said that it was a sphere until you had launch capability until you could actually go up there and actually turn around and look at the world you didn't really know don't ever tell me you don't give me that line that neil degrasse tyson that, that science is true whether or not you believe in it science is only true until the day that it's not which mm -hmm. is our point it's like look trust in science but count, you know what, what's the old saying um trust everyone but count your change that applies uh -huh. with science science has taken some massive liberties in this thing the bigger question the, the follow-up to that is uh, is like all those six groups are they all oh, China that was it <laughs> China supposedly that um, supposedly has a rover on the moon and a rover on Mars no one wants to talk about it um, mm -hmm. uh, are they all in on it you know and, and how could you keep it a secret that might be a follow up question for you which is uh, how would all of NASA keep a secret it's like because all of them wouldn't have to know it's compartmentalized which is you know, people polish fuel systems and do HR and scrub the floors and stuff nobody knows anything only the telemetry guys have to know. Very, very small group of guys. Um, if you ever want to watch a movie that ties into this directly, not necessarily mm -hmm. Flat Earth, but the faking of a space program, look at the, uh, I think it was 1978, uh, Capricorn One. Mm. A brilliant movie. With independent film, I think it was the highest grossing independent film about a fake Mars mission. And it was done. The only reason that movie was created is because the CBS affiliate hated the moon broadcast so much. He goes, he goes, it was such poor quality. He goes, I could make a better uh, moon production than this. He goes, hell, I could make a better Mars production. And hence the film was born. Uh, yeah. and it'll never, ever be remade. I'm sorry. That I'm is sorry. one question about the moon landing that's always been intriguing to me is how they could get that broadcast all the way down. Uh, but but the, at the time, because we have to remember the, the capabilities at the time. But Can I can uh, I bring that up for a second? Can yeah, I, can, sure. Give me, give me 30 seconds on this, which is sure. it, I, this wonderful photo. Maybe I'll send it to you afterwards. I know you're super busy. But there's a they, they show this wonderful satellite dish that they powered on the moon. And I go, uh -huh. and I've talked to engineers, and I've looked up the specs on this. This is not secret technology. I go, that's a VHF transmitter from 1969. That thing's running off a car battery. And, and it supposedly, I mean, that thing on a good day, that transmitter has maybe a range of 50 miles and that's Morse code. And this mm -hmm. thing was pumping out 10 frames of color video a second and yeah. perfect two-way communication over a quarter million miles through the Van Allen radiation belts with analog lineup. How? <laughs> you could spend that... hours trying to line that thing up. You're never hitting anything. That oh was, god but again I have, to, I have to give it up for weirdness on that people, one people <laughs> people yeah. that again the general public mm -hmm. uh will buy that what what they learned was if it's on television because i've asked people outside the country many many times i go i go i get the americans wave the flag i get that they <laughs> believe the moon you know stuff why do you believe it in ireland and england and south africa and new zealand and australia i go why do you believe it? they go well because it was on tv oh uh, Wow. It's like, yeah. yeah, and so I have to quote at that point the late Carrie Fisher, who was talking about reality television. She goes and she laughed and she goes, she goes, if it's on TV, it's not real. Right, right. Mm. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. In fact, you know, I was thinking about this too. What about all those that worked on the numbers on the, um, uh, you know, I think by now a lot of people have seen the mathematician movie that they were hired, the gals were hired. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> people working on the numbers sure. wouldn't they have known that there wasn't a way to do what they were doing if it was fake no 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 no. because yeah. the numbers that just because you can plot the numbers mm -hmm. you know it doesn't mean because remember they had to give them the the all the specs on it and it's like okay our fuel consumption and burn rate mm -hmm. and and uh trajectory and all that fun stuff you, they could work out the numbers but 
you, there's so many unknowns. The biggest one that we point out again, because the general public doesn't know, is that the the world people think, oh, the solar system's just sitting there in space and we're not moving. It's like forget about the 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 moon or the Earth supposedly circling around the sun at sixty thousand miles an hour. The solar system, if you believe mainstream science, is flying sideways like a like a dinner plate at half a million miles an hour, which means. If you reach at any point a, a null point, this point where the, the gravity of the Earth and the gravity of the moon is not grabbing on you, you're gone. Mm -hmm. Like like throwing a golf ball out of, of a car window that's moving really, really fast. It's gone. You you your spaceship is you've lost it. You you're never coming back. You and so what no one ever talks about it. It's it, they just and it's like not only that, it's like, oh, okay, maybe we can adjust for between the earth and the moon. Okay, forget about that then. How the All heck right. are we getting anything to Mars? Because when you fire anything off it, you know, to a certain distance, once you get between those bodies, there's no gravity holding you. Right. So right. that's it. You, you, I mean, yes, when you drop a golf ball out the window of a car, yeah, it'll stay with you for a few bounces. But that's mm -hmm. it, you know. It it's gone. Rearview mirror, right? We've never seen right. it again. Right, and I those that land, you know, it's it's interesting when you look back at that time. Never once was it ever said that it was a one in billion chance, and even more than that, that we could land on the moon at the time. It was kind of interesting that we just nailed it that first time. Oh, and okay, all right. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Okay. Not only did we nail it the first time, we were flawless. We went, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh no, Apollo thirteen, and everyone lived. It's like, no, that was right. that was for freaking drama, flawless, absolutely nothing went wrong. A spacesuit didn't go wrong, the boosters mm -hmm. didn't go wrong. Uh, oh hell, I, I, you know, I, I could, I, we're on, you know, let me drop this into. Can you see your chat from where you are? No. Oh, you can't. What if I? Oh no, my what? What if you're if if I? If I can I see, can I see my what? Your chat box. If I do this, do you mm -hmm. see it in five, four, three, two? No. Do you see that shot right there? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. If Got you it. click on that, you want me to destroy the moon in one thing? I'll, I'll destroy okay. one word. There's a satellite dish, by the way, which I love so much. And that's just okay. a random shot from Apollo 12, 1969. All right. Mm -hmm. Here, I, I, I challenge anyone to do this, right? It's, people have tried. It's it's date and time stamped at the bottom. I don't care that there's no stars in any moonshot. I know why there's no stars because it was too hard to calculate. You want to say it's an exposure setting? I don't care. No, there's one light source. It's the sun, 93 million miles away, right? Right. Well, what what do we know about light sources? One light source, the shadows go in how many directions? One. One oh, direction. Yeah. If it's that far away, right? They're all running parallel. These shadows are not parallel. There are a lot they, of shadows that are different. They are going yeah. to intersect. That would only happen if you had a bank of lights, studio lights, by the way, that was about 30 mm. yards behind the guy that's taking the camera, the the, the shot. Oh, I'm sorry. One, one more little thing. Oh, you see, by the way, you, you see all those footprints, all these lovely footprints. Uh -huh. The ash was always perfectly three to four inches deep. Nobody ever got a shovel and dug down to see how deep it was. It's like, right. okay. Uh, perfect footprints everywhere. No blast crater underneath that engine. None. I mean, that nothing was moved You're out right. of place. There wasn't anything there. And how did they fit all this equipment, and all this stuff yes. into that yes. capsule? There was a, yeah, and a car. Oh. Yeah, where did the car come from? The, they don't. They you do not see a lot of videos on how they took that thing apart and supposedly unfolded it. And it's like with all the effort and time it took, even if you did, it's like why would you have it? The only thing, you know the part that bugged me about the moon, most of all, and I, I know we're strapped for time. The, mm -hmm. the part that bugged me was their, their, their casual attitude about it. They sounded like freaking airline pilots when they were up there. It's like, uh, if yeah. you land on the moon and you're looking back at Earth, the only thing you care about is not dying. That's all you right. care about, right? right. You are checking right. your gauges constantly. No one, at no point, I've, I have looked, find me an audio in a thing where someone's saying, well, yeah, we, we may only have 15 minutes of air left. We might want to get back to the ship. No one ever talks about it. scuba divers constantly looking at their wristwatch, yeah. constantly yeah. looking at their yeah. gauges. These guys never did. Unlimited supply of air, apparently. Just yeah. walking and around, but, playing. Wasn't it Armstrong that came back and, and just did not want to be interviewed about it? At oh, all. Neil, was, he, Neil was a wreck. He, um, yeah. he was a recluse after that. All of them were. They were all in real, and, and I will give the powers that be credit in that they learned from the mistakes. I think they told those astronauts, sort of like the, the Capricorn One guys from the movie, I think they told them. I said, okay, they, they, I think the, the right stuff, the movie, I think the training program was absolutely legit. I think they wanted to be American heroes. I think they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the very last minute, they're like, 
okay, here's the deal. You're not going up. Here's yeah. here's why. And so they had to receive. You got to remember, people feel guilty about that sort, especially these sort of Boy Scouts. Whereas, like, they're getting accolades for things they didn't do. And they yeah. they just, I mean, the, the international they press conference. All their faces were just Oh, yeah, they were them. depressed. It's like these right. guys should have been high fi- a permanent high five. Yeah, it should right. have never stopped. And they were, I mean, Neil almost broke down and during a thing. I think it was Clinton, during a Clinton thing before he died. And he gave a speech and he this cryptic message about how there's so much to do if you can peel back some of what some of truth's hidden layers it's like Ooh. uh and i'm sure there was secret service in the back going all right if he says any more right. <laughs> we're pulling oh, oh. yeah that is re- it's telling and yeah. so one more question for well, actually two more it's just real quick yeah. one gravity do you not believe in gravity and uh and so let's talk about gravity for uh, just a second i'm a little different from other people because i will say there i okay I have no problem with gravity. The, well, I, it's usually a push between us and science, meaning you can ask any scientist and they will say, we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. We can only okay. tell you the symptoms of gravity. They say it's some sort of magical molecular force that pulls things down to the center of a ball. By the way, we never use the word round. It's either ball or sphere mm-hmm. or globe because technically round, your dinner plate is round, your dining room table is round. However, do I do I believe in some sort of gravity? Sure, but I also believe in density. That's where a lot of our, our group is into it. So, like, for example, if you take a beach ball and you hold it underneath the water of a pool or wherever, and you let it go, mm-hmm. it pops up, right? Was mm-hmm. it defying gravity? No, it was because the, the beach ball was less dense than the water around it. Less dense things rise and the heavier stuff fall. Like, you know, like a helium balloon. If, if you right. let it go, it's going to sail up until it reaches where exactly? You know, if it doesn't burst at a certain point, really goes to the edge of the atmosphere and then goes away. So, no, I, I do actually believe in gravity. The problem, I, I it's, for me, it's never a, a tough question because science can't tell you what it is because we've never reproduced it. We, mm-hmm. Yeah, I can, you can drop a pencil. It'll hit the floor. It's like, okay, what is it? But we, right. can't, we can't artificially create gravity. We can't create, we can't do anti-gravity. We can't uh, we can't counteract it. So okay, and then uh, one last uh, comment on this. I, I I know that there there's all there, there's probably multiple reasons because m- many people out there are going to go okay, okay. So if this is true, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Then what are the reasons? And two of the reasons Heglin brought up was uh, disruption of the economy of major countries if the truth comes out. Yeah. And because we direct that with the petrodollar. And then two, the potential project Bluebeam scam by the Illuminati to create one world uh, government. They can't use their FB, uh, their uh, UFO sham because they cannot get through the firmament, right? Yeah. Okay, so imagine you are, we'll just say the Illuminati. I mean, it could be the Bilderbergs, yeah. the Rothschilds, whatever. Nobody who knows, knows yeah. who's on top. I don't really, care. I don't, I don't really care. The, the, the first rule of power has never changed, which is stay hidden. Right. It's the curse of right. being the, the puppet master, which is you mm-hmm. can't be on stage. Napoleon actually said it best. He goes, never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown. Right. Because the, the mob can't get you if they don't know who you are. Anyway, so imagine you are an Illuminati group and you figure out in 1960, because you didn't have the technology to figure out what this world was until 1960. Seriously, until the internal combustion engine, we had nothing. You could have been the king of France in 1500 and here's the flat earth map laid out for you. It's like, oh, I got wooden ships and horses. I got nothing. So let's say you figure out in 1960, right? And you sit down, everyone's smoking and it's dark lit room. It's like, all right, do we tell people? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, what's the worst that could happen? And all of a sudden somebody goes, well, let's see, academic wise, um, astronomy and astrophysics have to be closed down and all the remaining sciences, biology, hydrology, archaeology, you name it, anything with an ology, they have to be rebuilt from the ground up. That means libraries have to be emptied out. It's educational chaos, Mm -hmm. academia. And then economically, you'd have to shut down world markets for months because you don't know what it means, what the ramifications are. Uh, we, we, where does everything play in? I mean, the industries would change, cities would move. I mean, it would, it would mm-hmm. be just chaos economically. But the big one is um, the religious side of things. You know, your your big five religious houses again: um, Judaism, Hindu, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. You're giving them all leverage against science simultaneously, and you're asking them to show restraint. 
that's mm. that's not going to happen because yeah. they're going to come to him and it's like, okay, so you were wrong about a really, really mm. big thing. What else are you wrong? You know what? Let's revisit something like, I don't know, evolution mm. and carbon dating and the Big Bang and dark matter mm. and, oh, I don't know, anything. Anything you guys have said in the last hundred years. And, the, you know, then you have this silence around the, the, woman, the meeting and it's like, yeah, we're not going to tell anybody for, for a while until, again, until we can figure out how to introduce it to the public. And to be right. fair, I wouldn't have done it either. I mean, even your, I, I put that to oh, Piers Morgan. I said, would you, would you break that? Would you break that story? And, and he, he shut up because <laughs> he knew full well what, what would happen. And, and, and I, Go wouldn't, ahead. here's the, here's the thing. I wouldn't do it, but I would now. Meaning, mm. look at the infrastructure. But the thing is, if you want to roll out something like that, you got to get everybody on the same page. And they've mm. done that. I mean, we've got high-speed internet, um, mm. six billion smartphones, social media. Every, right. You can push out the same narrative, which they've kind of done over the last year, and, mm -hmm. and it works. So can they – I mean, we, uh, come on. I have to, I've said this many times, which is – why haven't they crushed us? Why don't I have black cars outside my house? Why why haven't I been tailed? It's like because they're allowing us to do it. We we had help. They I mean YouTube promoted us for three years straight. Nothing but just just I mean they couldn't be more helpful with us. And so I think Flat Earth is a, a bigger I think it's a picture frame for a canvas we haven't seen yet. There's something something else coming. Could it be part of the blue beam thing? Yes. Because people's like, well, what's bigger than Flat Earth? I go, well, like you just said, you want to introduce another yeah. species? You know, right. uh, you know, you could, right. and and it would work. You could land a giant golden spaceship in the middle of I don't know Paris, and mm -hmm. then you would have two camps that would they'd be like, oh wow, you know, the, you have all the nerds be like, oh they do look like the people from Avatar, or mm -hmm. the other group would be like, oh we need to start a church in this group's name immediately. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, well maybe, and then also you've got uh, you know they they want to create the world. The world government, the world threat, the world fear to erase sovereignty and borders would that would, would be that of all the movies we've seen is when somebody comes to Earth, man, we all have to band together, forget the border. You the, know, you've heard that in a lot of movies. Well, yeah, yeah the, the I mean, it's yeah. before your time, but yeah, the Reagan um, UN speech from from years yeah. ago, where he was, he was really surprised that they let him read that, where he was saying, wouldn't it, you know, that all the pro our, all our problems would go away and the, and uh, all the border disputes would go down if we were unified against a common threat mm. so yeah. or or a john common or, the same thing. or a common ally in this case yes yeah. Yeah. john dewey the decimal system said the same thing he was the first one to introduce that I idea did not, i did not know that yeah back in the low 1800s it was when the when japan came over before uh world war one and um and then all of a sudden uh he said that out of the blue we needed a, a ufo threat uh to to yeah. bind us all together, I, so. i've been waiting for a while and mm -hmm. I, re people, people bug me all the time. They send me links. It's like, is this, it could happen it, getting closer. And I'm going, like, I'll believe it when I see it. But I was one of those guys that I, I bought it hook, line and sinker, the whole Nibiru thing way back in the day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, about a binary star system. And, and, you know, then here we are six years, seven years later. I'm like, no, <laughs> never happened. But, but no, I believe in it. Absolutely. And, and I challenge, I mean, if you want to have some fun, if you're one of those fans, maybe I'll send you a, um, there's a, my favorite UFO clips is from British Columbia, right north of here. Yeah, send During the day, sure. I, I will shoot that to you. But um, if, if anyone's out there listening and wants, you want to have some fun, you got a little money to spend, uh, buy a pair of night vision binoculars, five power or higher, and s start looking up. That was put to me by a British guy years ago. And he goes, start looking up in the sky, man. And it is. It's like They Live, the movie. I mean, it, the sky is freaking crawling with things. And it didn't even occur to me. It's like, oh, right. The UFOs don't have to have their lights on. <laughs> they were just <laughs> fine without them. Because we, we, we always think, oh, it's like Close Encounters, all these blinking lights everywhere. It's like, no, your car works just fine with the headlights off. <laughs> Right. So. Interesting. Okay. I hadn't thought of that. All right. Uh, thanks for coming on, Mark. Mark Sargent, Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. It gives me a lot of food for thought, something to think about. And I'm always, I always love to be challenged. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. Thanks a lot. Is that it? All right. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate it.
doing this because I do think it's it's just opening up minds. I mean, I, I think it's great. It's so I it's, think it's, it's a weird, weird topic, and uh, it has taken me places that I never, ever thought I'd be. I mean, oh, I, uh, I did not want to do this, and uh, at some point I just said, all right. What do you do for a living? The what? What do you do for a living? This is what I do. <laughs> this, this is it. what you do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, I've gosh. got... I've got oh. Two books on Amazon. Uh, I do. Um, I well before the whole pandemic thing, I was doing conferences and public speaking things and um, meetups. Oh and I mean, the Netflix documentary did extremely well. Surprised it hell. I they um I, I went. I did a television commercial in Australia. Where they, oh my gosh! They, they called me up and they said, "Hey, we go, would you like can, would you like to do a um uh, a commercial? We're doing a mobile app. We need a flat earther." It's like, <laughs> yeah. Sure. And, I love it. That's great. Yes. That's great. Yeah, I think it's so great. It's like well, I, I, I am not going to regret anything that, I, that I've done with this. It has been a heck of a ride. Well, thanks, Mark. Really appreciate it. I might hit you up too in the future again. Is that okay? Uh, <laughs> do not hesitate. Send me, I will. Send I, me those clips. Uh, yeah, yeah. I will. Uh, do you want, wait, do I have your. Uh, uh, do you want me to send them to you or do you want me to jump? I sent you an email. I sent you an email. Oh, crap. Was that from you? Damn it. Yeah. Can you send me another one? I think I, yeah, I think I, well, true. no, I, I, I killed it because, um, uh, let me see if I type in Kate, will it come in? I don't think it will. Okay. I'll send one to you. Yeah. Please, please send me to him. Okay. Send it to me and I'll, yeah. I'll send you some fun stuff. You're awesome. Okay. Thank you. Right, Thanks see, Mark. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, bye. -bye. <laughs>